so that's what I do. But Skarmory actually survives on a minimal sliver of health. As I see Skarmory retaliating with Steelwing, I knew I was done for. But then a miracle happened. Pokemon Ultra Moon is a game that is widely considered to be one of the harder games in the series. I wanted to take it one step further though and see if I could beat the game without taking any damage even once. I also have a theme for what I name my Pokemon, so if you can guess what it is, leave your answer in the comments below. Now, let's see if I can pull this off. I did some research beforehand and decided to choose Rowlet as my starter. Why I specifically chose Rowlet I'll explain in just a minute. It was then time to start leveling up Napoleon, which, not gonna lie, is probably the hardest part of this run. I'll have to take out a bunch of wild Pokemon without taking a single hit of damage until I reach level 8, at which point I can start to safely take out certain Pokemon. I gain anywhere between 10 to 30 XP points after each battle, meaning I'll have to beat approximately 10 battles, hoping that the opposing Pokemon always goes for a non-attacking move. For a reference, that has about a 0.01% chance of happening. 61 resets later though, I finally managed to level up all the way to level 8, meaning I can now safely take out level 2 Rattata and Caterpie. After doing so for a while, Napoleon grows even stronger and can now safely take out higher level Pokemon, making life a little easier. After leveling up all the way to level 15, I feel confident enough to take on my rival Hao. The battle went a little something like this. As I'm leveling up Napoleon some more, I happen to encounter a Ledeba, when this happens. So, I gotta do it all over again. A few moments later. I get my Rowlet, name her Napoleon, level her up, and beat Howe. After a long while, I finally manage to level up Napoleon to level 17, meaning she evolves into a Dartrix. On my way to Heiahea City, I decide to take a major risk. I went to catch a Zorua. The thing is, if I want to catch him, I have to throw a Pokeball and hope it catches it on the first throw. No! I got a Zoro, let's go! Oh, let's go! Oh. I got seriously lucky there. Safely catching more Pokemon is definitely a problem I'll need to solve soon. Leveling up weaker Pokemon could potentially have been a problem, but thanks to the XP share, I'm able to level up both Caesar the Zorua and Napoleon simultaneously. After a very long session of leveling up my team, I take on the totem Pokemon Raticate, who actually gets a defense boost right off the bat. I go for Pluck, hoping it'll one-shot, and thankfully it does. Now, there is one problem that's been haunting me for a while, Kahunahala's Makuhira. It has access to the move Fake Out, which is a normal type priority move. This means that even if my Pokemon are faster, it'll still hit first. This is why I picked Rowlet, because its final evolution, Decidueye, actually gains the Ghost typing, meaning she'll be immune to Fake Out. The problem is, leveling up is starting to get real slow. I actually realize I can catch a Ghastly though, so once again, I risk it. Stand aside, stand aside. <laughs> Having decided I'm not willing to risk resetting over this, I run away after all. I randomly run into this oversized smurf and her furfru. I press pluck, and it somehow doesn't take her out. To my absolute delight, furfru only goes for growl, and so on the next turn, I can safely take her out. I then have no choice but to level up Napoleon all the way to level 34, which is the level she evolves into a Decidueye. Leveling up will definitely be a painful process throughout this run, as the Pokemon Nursery in this generation actually doesn't grant any XP points, so that's not an option. The only way to level up is by fighting wild Pokemon. With Napoleon evolved, I decide it's time to challenge Kahuna Hala. Hala sends out his Machop first, but withdraws him for some reason and sends out his Scraballer. This is no issue though, since Napoleon one-shots him with Pluck. Hala sends out his Makuhita, but just like planned, Makuhita is unable to use Fake Out, so Napoleon is able to take him out using Pluck. Last out is Machop, but thankfully, another Pluck is enough to take him out, winning me the first Grand Trial. I allow myself to save after each Grand Trial. After all, the point of this run is not to mindlessly throw away my time, but rather solving problems and strategizing. It's time to take on the big waves and head on over to the next island, so I hop on a Mantine and start surfing. Speaking of which, this video is actually sponsored by Surfshark. 
Surfshark is a VPN service that, much like Mantine Surfing, is the absolute best way to travel. With Surfshark, you can safely connect to public Wi-Fis, overcome location-based price discrimination, and best of all, access all your favorite sites no matter where you are. In fact, you can unlock content on most platforms by simply installing the VPN on computers, phones, smart TVs, and more with a single subscription. Now, you might say, Twig, surfing is way too hard. I'll have to take a bunch of surfing lessons and... Nope, it's not. Surfshark is super easy to install and use. Subscribe to Surfshark using code TWIG to get an 83% discount on your subscription. That's literally the best price you'll get anywhere. And not only that, but you'll even get three extra months for free. Anyways, upon arriving at Akala Island, I do some research and head straight for the next totem Pokemon, Araquanid. Also, I actually went ahead and got myself a Flyanium Z for this battle. What I am worried about though is that Araquanid actually has a decent defense stat, but according to my calculations, Napoleon should most likely be able to take it out. I press Supersonic Sky Strike, and after waiting way too long for the animation to finish, I take it out in one hit. Now, upon beating the totem Pokemon, I can actually catch a Morlul. This is absolutely huge. Why? Well, Morlul actually gets access to the move Spore, a 100% accurate move that puts the opposing Pokemon to sleep. Now, that's already great, but the best thing about this is that I'll be able to put wild Pokemon to sleep and safely catch them. Thankfully, one Nest Ball catches him without fail, and so I name my Morlul Genghis. I head to the very next patch of grass to do some leveling up, and after a while, Caesar actually evolves into a Zoroark. I then make sure to train Genghis until he evolves into a Shinesek, and eventually learns Spore. This is huge, because I actually need to catch someone for the next totem Pokemon, Alolan Marowak. The problem is, it has Detect. If it uses Detect straight away, it'll be able to call for an ally on the next turn. This is a huge problem since I don't have any moves that can take out both Pokemon at the same time. So, as I was saying, I need to catch someone. That someone being a Rockruff. I chose Rockruff because he gets access to Rock Slide, which is a super effective move against Totem Marowak. At this point in time, I also thought he'd get Accelerock, which would be extremely useful. I only later realized it's exclusive to Lycanroc Day form. Anyway, I found a Rockruff and here's how it went. <laughs> I didn't realize its ability could be Vital Spirit. That could have gone very wrong, and I definitely need to do some more research in the future. I decide to still throw an Ultra Ball since I really want Rock Crop, and thankfully it stays in the ball. I name her Meiji. Now next up I'll be facing a huge problem I didn't even think of before I started this challenge. The Battle Royale Dome. For those that don't know, it's like Fortnite but less cringe. The Battle Royale is a mandatory battle where I'll have to fight three other trainers. Anyone can attack anyone, so this might actually be a run ender for me. After doing some research, apparently Professor Kukui's Rockruff usually goes for Protect, so that won't be a problem for me. I have to hope that Gladion either attacks someone else or goes for a non-effective normal type attack, as Napoleon takes out House Brion. It's definitely risky, but it's all I can do. Just like planned, Rockruff goes for Protect. Napoleon connects with Leaf Blade onto Brion, and... I got so lucky there. I then train up my team until Meiji evolves into a Lycanroc and learns Rock Slide. This took me several hours. After putting on a show for me, Totem Marowak challenges me to a battle. He actually gets a plus 2 speed boost, so I'm a bit worried that he'll outspeed. Expecting a Detect, I press Rock Slide, but to my surprise, Marowak doesn't go for Detect. I outspeed, connect with a 90% accurate Rock Slide, and take out Marowak in one hit. Well, that was stressful. I then bump into Colrass, who says, I've had quite the curious request made to me by a couple of most oddly dressed strangers, says the walking jukebox. I then take on the last totem Pokemon of Akala Island, Lurantis. I actually have a minus attack nature on Napoleon, so before I do that, I make sure to properly level everyone up. Other than that, this should be fairly straightforward as I know while will outspeed, and the calculations say I should always be able to take her out. So I press Spirit Shackle, and it takes her out. Finally, I'll have to battle Kahuna Olivia. This battle should be fairly simple. Napoleon takes out Anorith with Spirit Shackle. Olivia sends out her ace, Lycanroc, but before he can do anything, Napoleon takes him down with a Z move, just to be safe. Finally, Napoleon takes out Olivia's Leleep with a Leaf Blade, winning me an easy battle. 
Before we get any further into the video, I keep noticing that only 7% of my viewers are actually subscribed. So, subscribe. It honestly helps me out so much. Since I beat the Grand Trial, I finally get to save my progress. I arrive at Ula Ula City, which is also where I'll find my next encounter. On Route 10, I can catch a Pancham. This is great because Pancham has the Mold Breaker ability, meaning it disregards abilities like Sturdy or Disguise, which is imperative for beating a run like this one. I successfully catch her and name her Augustus. The next totem Pokemon is going to be a Togedemaru. At first glance, it might not seem too bad. It's just a little Pikachu ripoff, right? Well, it is, but it also gets a defense boost and has spiky shield. This means that even if I use a super effective Z move, it might very well not be enough. So, I do the only thing I can do and start XP grinding. In the process, Augustus evolves into a Pangaro. After having done a decent amount of training, I decide to battle the Totem Pokémon. I'm certain Togedemaru will use Spiky Shield, so I use Protect to stall it out. The problem with this is that Togedemaru calls for an ally now. Togedemaru most likely won't be able to use Spiky Shield, so I go for my Z move, which thankfully KOs. As I suspected, Skarmory initially won't use any attacking moves, so I'm in the clear for now. I cross my fingers and hope that a Brick Break will finish off Skarmory. But it doesn't! And to my horror, Skarmory uses Tailwind, meaning it will outspeed from now on. My only choice here is to go for Bullet Punch, so that's what I do. But Skarmory actually survives on a minimal sliver of health. As I see Skarmory retaliating with Steel Wing, I knew I was done for. But then a miracle happened. I press Bullet Punch one more time, which takes out Skarmory. I have no idea how I managed to make it out of this one. The previous battle made me realize that I seriously need to do some leveling up if I want to beat this run, so that's what I do. Cue the training montage. Feeling ready, I head down to Melee City once again to challenge bug catcher Gus. His Golisopod does have first impression, so I use Protect to counter it. On the next turn, Napoleon sucker punches Golisopod, which is enough to activate Emergency Exit. Guzma sends out Masquerade next, but despite lowering Napoleon's attack with Intimidate, one Spirit Shackle is still enough to take it out. Golisopod comes back out, so Napoleon uses Sucker Punch once more, which is enough and wins me the battle. Next up in the Island Challenge is Totem Mimikyu. It has the ability Disguise, which in this generation lets the user take the first hit without losing any health. Luckily, I do have Augustus with Moldbreaker. Not so luckily, Mimikyu is insanely fast and even gets a speed boost, so the only choice I have is to significantly level up Augustus until she outspeeds Mimikyu. After way too many hours of leveling up Augustus, it's finally time to battle Mimikyu. I send out Augustus and go for my Z move right away. Which takes down Mimikyu. The battle might have lasted less than a minute, but so much time and effort went into making that minute possible. After having dealt with that roadblock, I somehow end up in Potan, which is completely occupied by Team Skull. They even charge you for using the Pokemon Center, but jokes on them, I don't even need to heal my Pokemon. After way too many cutscenes, it's finally time to battle Kahuna Nanu. This is a big one, because winning it would mean I get to save again. I lead with Genghis against Nanu Sableye and use Protect to avoid Fake Out. After that, a Moonblast takes it down with ease. Nanu sends out Persian next, so I send out Caesar and go for Protect once again to avoid Fake Out. After that, I use my Z move to absolutely obliterate the bloated cat, meaning Nanu is now down to his last Pokemon. I send out Napoleon and after a single Leaf Blade, I've defeated the third Kahuna, so I save my game. I then realize I can actually get myself a Mimikyu, which would be absolutely perfect for this challenge, so I head back to Ula Ula Island and catch one. I name her Huang. Resuming my progression through the main storyline, I head over to the Aether Paradise for some more cutscenes. I'm then challenged by Guzma again. He sends out Golisopod, so I once again use Protect to avoid a potential first impression, and then hit him hard with Sucker Punch. Golisopod barely survives, but Emergency Exit activates. Pinsir comes out next, but Napoleon is able to one-hit KO him with Spare Shackle. Masquerade is out next, so I decide to use my Z move. After waiting maybe an hour for the animation to finish, Masquerade gets knocked out. Golisopod comes out again, so Napoleon uses Sucker Punch for the KO. Last out is Vikavolt, so I switch into Huang. 
I press play rough, which, to my surprise, only takes it down to about a half. I pray that another 90% accurate play rough will connect. And so it does. There was a fair chance I would have had to reset there, not gonna lie. Having taken down Guzma, I then have to battle Lusamine, who I'm now noticing has hair that defies all laws of physics. This one's fairly straightforward. Napoleon takes down Clefable with Leaf Blade. Augustus thankfully outspeeds and takes down Lopunny with Brick Break. But where is out next, so I switch into Genghis and take her out with Moonblast. Napoleon once again takes down Milotic with a single Leaf Blade. And last out is Lilligant, so I go for my Z move, which easily takes her out. I head on over to Vast Pony Canyon next, where I happen to find a Mianfu. Having one could definitely be useful, as I'm lacking some special attackers and would need another fighting type for later, as you'll see. I decide to catch it and name him Hadrian. I venture down further into Vast Pony Canyon, where I happen to find the next totem Pokemon. What a coincidence! Being a pseudo-legendary, Kamao may seem like a major threat, but I happen to have the perfect counter, Huang, so I challenge the totem to a battle. To ensure the kill, I use my Z move, which is absolutely hilarious by the way. This easily takes out the totem Kamo. I put my recorder skills from kindergarten to good use and summon Lunala. Big mistake. Necrozma shows up and fuses with Lunala, and now I gotta deal with that mess. I send out Caesar and go for a quad effective Z move, which takes out the legendary Pokemon in one shot. Next up is probably the biggest challenge of the run, Ultra Necrozma. It really is a major challenge because of its brutally high base stat total and the fact that it gets an Omni Boost right away. By the looks of it, it would appear that my run ends here. But turns out there's a very simple solution to this though, which one clever viewer pointed out in the comments of my previous Ultra Sun video. Zorark has the ability Illusion which changes its appearance to the last member in your party. This means that if I put Hadrian at the back of my party, Caesar turns into him and will now be seen as a fighting type by Necrozma. This should hopefully bid it to use Photon Geyser, which doesn't affect Caesar. So I put all my trust into a YouTube comment and challenge Necrozma to a battle. Here's how it went. Turns out that whether it's a toxic 12 year old on Pokemon Showdown or a light consuming deity, they all fall for good old illusion. Resuming my island challenge, I go back to Pony Island to battle Totem Rubambi. This is actually an insanely hard battle as Rubambi receives a double Omni Boost right off the bat, making it insanely fast. I need to level up my Pokemon to be able to face this beast. I decide Huang's my best bet since apparently nothing will outspeed Rubambi even after having leveled up all the way to level 90. Rubambi goes for an attacking move, busting Huang's disguise right away. I use my Z move hoping desperately that it's enough. All that's left now is challenging the Kahuna, so that's what I do. Hapu leads with Golurk, but Caesar takes it out in one shot. Mudsdale is out next, but Napoleon one-shots it with Leaf Blade. I send out Huang to deal with Flygon and use my Z move. This easily takes it out. Last out is Gastrodon, but Napoleon takes it out as well. And so I've cleared my island challenge, allowing me to save my progress one last time. On my way up Malana Kila, I'm challenged by Edgelord Gladion. He leads with Crobat, which I managed to take out with Night Slash. Now I'm faced with some severe mind games. Gladion has a Zorark himself, so I can't know for sure what he'll send out next. I decide Hadrian is my best choice, and as it turns out, it was the real Sylvalai after all. This doesn't really matter though, as Hadrian still one-shots with Aura Spear. The mind games continue, so I decide to send out Huang as Gladion sends out Lucario. My gut tells me it's Zorark though, so I go for X Scissor. And wouldn't you know it, my gut was right. Last out is the real Lucario, but using my Z move, I easily take it out as well. As I'm ascending Mount Lanakila, I happen to stumble upon Necrozma. I decide to catch it using my Master Ball, as it could be immensely useful for the League. I name it Wilhelm I. I happen to run into a trainer duo that actually bring a problem to my attention. One of them has a Tyranitar with Sandstream, which can deal chip damage. I start by taking out the other trainer's Pokemon, so the focus will be on Tyranitar. Thanks to Mold Breaker, Augustus even takes out Fortress in one shot despite it having Sturdy. 
Because I have Huang on the field, the trainer sends out Bisharp before Tyranitar for the type matchup. So after taking out the Bisharp, there is only Tyranitar left. Tyranitar comes out, but I'm able to KO it on the same turn, so I don't end up taking any damage from the Sandstorm. That could have gone real bad. Before challenging the League, I make sure to properly level up all of my Pokémon and get a couple items that'll come in useful later. This process and any leveling up I've done throughout this entire run took me ages, so make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It's all the support I need to keep making these kinds of videos. After preparing and getting everything ready, I head into the League. I decide to take on Kahili first since I usually find her to be the easiest. I lead with Wilhelm who takes down Braviary with a power gem. Halucha is out next so I switch into Huang and take him out with a Z move. I send out Wilhelm again and take out Mandibuzz with another power gem. Now Toucanon does have Beak Blast which could burn and cause problems but since Wilhelm is a special attacker I don't have to worry about that so one more power gem takes him out as well. Last out is Oricorio, but a quad effective power gem is far more than it can handle, so that's the first battle won. Next up I take on Acerola. She leads with Bennett, so I go for a super effective Spirit Shackle which does take it out. Acerola sends out Frostlass next. Frostlass has Ice Shard which is a priority move, but also has Confuse Ray which makes Sucker Punch somewhat risky. I decide to switch into Augustus instead and go for Bullet Punch, which luckily is enough to take it out. Next up is Delmise, so I send Napoleon back out and go for Sucker Punch, which takes out Delmise. Acerola sends out Palisand, so I go for my Z move, which is more than enough to take it out. Last out is Drifblim. Drifblim has the Aftermath ability, which deals damage upon fainting if the opponent uses a physical move. Thankfully, I have Wilhelm. One Power Gem is enough to KO, whilst also avoiding Aftermath. I challenge Olivia next. This battle could definitely be a hard one, as she has a Gigalith with Sandstream. After the battle with the trainer duo on Mount Lenaquila though, I realized I had to get a pair of safety goggles. Safety goggles is an item that makes its holder immune to weather chip damage, as well as certain moves. This will allow me to remain unharmed despite the Sandstorm. Olivia starts out with Armaldo, so I go for Power Gem which takes it out without issue. Olivia sends out Lycan Rock, so I switch into Hadrian and take it out with an Aura Sphere. Next up is Cradilly, so I switch into Huang, who takes it down with an X Scissor. Now, Olivia sends out her Gigalith, so I send out Augustus, equipped with safety goggles. Augustus uses Brick Break, and to my relief, it is enough for the KO. Olivia sends out her Proba Pass that actually has Sturdy, but Augustus has Mold Breaker, so another Brick Break takes it out in one shot, winning me another battle. Finally, I challenge Melane to a battle. He leads with Klefki, so I decide Huang's my best bet. Klefki actually misses a Thunder Wave, so I'm able to bring it down to half with a Shadow Claw. On the next turn, Klefki does connect with a Thunder Wave, but Huang has a Sherry Sherry Berry equipped, so she's cured and is able to take out Klefki with another Shadow Claw. Melane sends out Metagross next, so I switch to Caesar disguised as a Mian Shao to bait out Zen Headbutt. Metagross doesn't actually get a chance to attack though, as one Night Slash KOs instantly. The real Hadrian comes out now and takes out Bisharp with an Aura Sphere. Napoleon one-shots Dugtrio with a Sucker Punch, and so Melane is down to his last Pokemon. Magnazone with Sturdy. I send out Augustus to take it out with Brick Break, and with that I've beaten all of the Elite Four. It is then time to battle Hao for the title of champion. Hao starts off with his Raichu, so I send out Caesar to take it out with a Night Slash. Primarina is out next, so I switch into Napoleon and take it out with Leaf Blade. Hao sends out his Flareon next, and I make a mistake. So typical to start choking right before the finish line. Thankfully, I was able to recover. I send in Hadrian who is able to take down Tauros with an Aura Sphere. Howl then sends out Noivern, so I send in Wilhelm who takes it down with a power gem. Last out is Crabominable, so I go for my Z move. That was definitely a challenge and a half. I loved coming up with solutions to overcome the many problems I faced in this one, though it certainly involved an excessive amount of XP grinding. With that said, consider subscribing as I have an insane lineup of videos coming out in the near future that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Also, leave a like and comment for the algorithm. Anyways, I'll see you soon in the next video. Goodbye.